morning everyone so I'm just gonna review the puddle thing really quick because I want to show you something a little different on puddles and some ways to cut them up but you all know the this the, you know the um, the way to do it right you just take some some squares of glass pretty similar in size and uh, three to ten the ten is the most I've ever done and you put them in the kiln and you fire them but you fire these they melt down into a puddle and then you chop them up and you, you know, you break them up with a hammer or you cut them with a glass um, cutter, something like that. You put them on edge in the kiln. You guys got that. And then they melt down into these interesting colors and puddles. That's why they're called puddles. So you can see all those layers of it. This is another one I made. So those are all the chunks. And these are some of the puddles that came out of it. And in this one, I put some clear. You see two of them stuck together. So I'd refire those. Um, and sometimes they're more interesting on the back. Now, in this case, it's just straight lines on the back. But on the front, it's got that zigzag, which I love. And the way to get that is to take your jagged pieces. You want really jagged pieces. And when you put those in the kiln, like this, you get that really interesting zigzag when you have these jagged pieces. It gives it more interest, I think. So, uh, you know, that's that's interesting. But, to me, that's more interesting. I like it when it moves, when it's got movement, and this, to me, is fantastic. Let's see, can you see that with the, there you go. I just love that that movement in it. I think it's so much better. So it got me to thinking. Instead of making a puddle with square pieces that are all the same, why not do them when different piece, you know, different uh, size pieces? So here's kind of what I did. On the bottom layer, I put a gap. I spaced them out, and then maybe did like this, like this, like this actually left this gap here for about three layers. I dropped a huge piece of um, like this. By the way, this is System 96. Uh, it doesn't change anything. Um, but I dropped a huge piece of white, so I ended up with these really chunky, jagged pieces, so I used them in this. Okay, so once I got, let's see, I want another color there. Once I got it about three high, then I started going this way. Oh, and I, I tried not to duplicate two colors at the same time. Um, you know, I don't want two colors matching, but uh, what's it going to hurt? Who knows, right? You might as well. Do whatever you want. Oh, I haven't been doing yellow. Let me get some yellow in there. Get some white in there. Get some yellow. So you get the idea. I made a puddle with space in it so that it would um, fill in the gaps. <laughs> you can even put these on there. It doesn't matter. You just put whatever you want. You just make this big jumbled pile, right? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay together because it's more than two layers of glass. So it's going to um, puddle together, but it's going to fill in all those gaps and create beautiful colors, right? Let me move that over there, you can see it. And this is one of the puddles I made. You can see the bottom. You can see I put the blue, the green, and the white. I left this big gap right here. And then I started going this way. You can see the white one there, and then the blue one. And then I started putting more and more layers and more and more jumble. And I did that with these colors, but I also did them with those colors at the same time. I put two puddles in. And this is the result of the one that looked like that. Kind of those colors. There's no green in this one, but you get the idea. And let's see if I can show you, like this one. Oh my gosh. It doesn't get any prettier than this, I think. Holy Moses. Gosh, that's gorgeous. Oh, look at this one down here. Can you see that one? So I'm getting a lot more movement in the pieces when I'm 
like jumbling, you know, the glass for the puddle. Now I always get these, these guys who fell over on their side because I had them too tall. <clears throat> but generally, if you flip them over, they're probably more interesting. If they're not on the back side, then um, you can always cut them and refire them, right? So let me show you a couple tricks on cutting these. A uh, couple of tools. I love my nippers. I got them on eBay. Somebody asked me about them. Just look for tile nippers on eBay and these will come up. This is a um, heavy duty glass cutter. I got it at the Glass Expo last year. Toyo Craft for glass. And it's this massive cutter. And I love it. And it comes with a glass cutter inside or with it yeah inside so you get this glass cutter kind of expensive but boy when you need to cut big glass this will do it so let's let me show you how it works really quick can I move that out of the way and I'm gonna cut it right down the middle I'll show you how and what this does is it has a tapping blade. The blade, instead of being, um, you know, it's a cutting blade around here, but in the middle, instead of it being just a circle where the blade just rotates, it's got little dips in it. So as the blade is going across, it's going kink, 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 kink. It's tapping the glass and helping it cut the glass. So it's very cool and it works. And I ended up buying a tapping blade for my old cutter and nothing else boy you'll love this blade I love it so this thing is adjustable you unscrew it and the white thing drops down and but I'm lining up my score line with this white line and then I'm tightening this so that the glass is kind of tight in there okay there the glass is tight in there can you see it so this is gonna push up on that score line and these two white things right here which are adjustable but this is as close as they'll get and you just squeeze down on it and it breaks it let's see let's try again I'm gonna try this one I just uh, use it all the time I'm gonna go from this side That's a really good one. So I have a really flat edge. And the reason I like the flat edge is it sets up better in the kiln. Now I can cut these guys. Let's see. Turn it this way, yeah? Yeah. Okay, this part's a little thicker. It's, it's a fabulous tool, let me tell you. Worth the money if you like cutting big glass, and I cut big chunks, so I like it. Okay, if you don't have one of those, or your glass breaker won't break it, because I can't get my glass breaker to break this stuff. There's no way. It doesn't have enough pressure on the outsides of it. Um, you can always use your nipper. Okay, I'm gonna save that for this. No puddle piece is lost. Let's see. I might leave that just as it is. I like that jagged mountainy edge right there, right? So that when I set it down, that's going to create that movement. So I like those jagged edges. But on these little pieces that I'm popping off, okay, that's kind of cool. Might just be a basic straight one, but you know, it's in my favorite color, so how can I go wrong? These little pieces, don't let them go to waste. You know, they become little pebbles. I've got them rolling all over this sheet, but you get the idea. Those little pe pebbles, gosh, they can be used in anything. Uh, hard to see. Let's see. There you go. Gosh, that's so pretty. Doesn't hurt that I love the colors. All right. So if all you have is some nippers, whatever nippers you have, you can, you can make it work. They hurt my hands eventually. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a 
gorgeous piece. Can you see that? All the different colors in there. Instead of just a brown line, you've got all these different dots going through there. It's going to be fantastic. Um, but these hurt my hands after a while. That's why I do the basic breaking with these. And then I start using these. So, Or you can hammer. You all know you can hammer it, right? You put it in any kind of bag or... For mine, I usually put them around paper towels. I just put a paper towel on the bottom, paper towel on the top, and I lightly hit it with a hammer. So if you want, you can just put a bale on it. Um, but I've also used these where I've um, piled them up sort of next to each other, sort of made a little kind of a river of them. I don't like that one, not enough interest. So trying to make a river. Am I moving too much? Take these little pieces and fill in. They can be stacked up because you want to fill in all those gaps, but make like a dish. You would take a piece of white, since I've got white in here, you'd want a color that would fill in these gaps if it doesn't fill in with these little pieces. Um, so you would put a base piece of glass, put these right here, put a, put a piece of what, like orange here and a piece of blue over here you can make a neat little tray. What makes your glass different is not taking this piece of glass and this piece of glass and making a necklace because we all have that glass. What you're trying to do is take this glass and make new glass that only belongs to you. This is you. You made this. Not Spectrum or Bullseye made this. You made this. So. I've got a piece of glass right here. This is made by Spectrum. Really beautiful piece of glass. But I can spot it anywhere. This is a Spectrum piece of glass. I don't want to make things that people say, oh, that's a Spectrum piece of glass. I want things where people look at it and go, oh, that's a Susan McGarry piece of glass. Or that's something I've never seen. Or I love that and I'd love to recreate it, but I can't because I'll never get that same combination. It's something unique to you. And that's the key to me with glass. We all make puddles. We all know how to make the puddles. But it's the color combination that's now yours, right? Or what you do with them. That's about it for the pebbles. There we go. Lots of puddles. Bye. Thanks for joining.